A new season of anime is upon us and it looks like summer 2023 is going to be a great follow up to spring, which was already one of the best seasons I'd ever seen. There's a lot of great shows I'm looking forward to this season, but these are my top 10. Starting us off at number 10 is one of the most insane premises I've ever seen in an anime. Reborn as a vending machine, now I wander the dungeon. Now I know, I know what you're thinking, oh boy, another isekai, but I promise this one is actually different. Not just in the insanity of the title, but the actual quality of the story. It's been one of my most anticipated adaptations ever since I discovered the light novel through a Reddit meme a few years ago, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what they do with this. As the name suggests, the main character is reincarnated as a literal vending machine within a dungeon that's similar to the dungeon from Dan Machi in that there's entire communities and towns. Where the series really shines is in its character interactions between the two main leads as well as the main character and other people they encounter throughout the story. The economic and cultural shock of a vending machine being thrown into a world where they didn't exist prior is not something we really see explored, but I promise you it's hilarious. I think this could end up being a dark horse of the season like Isekai Nason from last season. The first episode has some really good art and animation, so I'm looking forward to seeing where it goes. At number 9, we've got St. Cecilia and Pastor Lawrence. Now, I really only have a rudimentary understanding of this one since I haven't read the manga, but given its Dogakobo romance in a four coma adaptation, I'm very much looking forward to it. Dogakobo are my second favorite studio, and they never disappoint with cutesy stories like this. From what I've seen in the previews and synopsis, it seems like it'll be an intimate character driven story, so I can't wait to see how the two leads' relationship develops. The plot is simple enough with Lawrence being a pastor in charge of taking those in spiritual need to see the local saint, Cecilia, who gives them advice on whatever is troubling them. This leads the two of them to gradually get closer and develop a relationship. It's a simple setup, but an exciting one nonetheless. I'm all for cute, slow burn, slice of life romance, so very excited for this one. Next at number eight is a show that set Twitter on fire a few months ago when the trailer dropped, My Tiny Senpai. Contrary to the casual tourist crowd on Twitter, there's nothing pedophilic or even remotely controversial with this show other than a short woman. Adult workplace shows are always nice to see as they're more relatable at this point in life than the high school settings we get ad nauseum these days. And from what I saw in the first episode, it's just an extremely cute, silly, wholesome watch with some sweet characters. I like to think of this as a slightly more lewd, My Senpai is annoying from a few seasons ago they definitely play into the fact that the girl has big boobs so if that's something that makes you uncomfortable this is your warning but on the whole it's a very cute watch and i'm excited lucky number seven brings us the obligatory degenerate harem fan service watch of the season temple another show i haven't personally read the source for but the premise alone and tags are enough to pique my interest and earn its spot on this list basically a guy decides to dedicate his life to the cloth as a priest and moves into a temple the catch is the temple is full of women as you can imagine this leads to a lot of etchy and fan service situations. Heavy shades of Cafe Terrace from last season in this one, and I can't wait to see what etchy antics we get up to in this one as well. It's from the same mangaka as Grand Blue and Haganai as well, so I know it's going to be hilarious. Very high expectations for this one. At number six, there's another show that got on Twitter's bad side. The Girl I Like Forgot Her Glasses or Ski Mega. This one earned controversy for a totally different reason than My Senpai though. The animation style and camera movements used in the show are, let's just say, different. For me, they're a huge plus as I like the unique direction and style, but to others, it's jarring. Apparently, the studio Gohans are known for that look, and it's in a lot of their other works, but I've never seen them, so I don't really have exposure to that. I feel like it's one of those things that you either love or you hate, and I love it personally. I think it takes a good story to the next level, so I'm excited. Animation aside, this one is really cute. Another Takagi-style pure and wholesome watch. Middle school setting, shy main character who has a crush on a girl and the gimmick of her bad eyesight bringing them together. It's simple and wholesome, just how I like them. Only complaint I have so far is the main character is a little on the wimpy side. Hopefully that gets better as the season goes on because it was a little grating in the first episode, but we'll see. Making our way into the top half of the list at number five, there's the most heretical last boss queen. And what can I say? I'm a sucker for Otome anime and female main characters, and this one just looks like it'll be one of the better ones we've seen. I've had it on my plan to read list for years, but just haven't got around to it because of my other light novel backlog. But from the first episode that we've seen, I'm very optimistic about this show. Unlike the other Otome anime we've had as of late, this one actually has a girl take over a real villainess, not just someone who gets in the main character of a game's way and acts as a love rival, but a genuinely horrible person. It creates a unique situation wherein the main character, Pry, wants to do right by everyone who her character wronged before the reincarnation. The art is solid, the voice acting looks good, and the story setup being so different makes this a must watch for me. 
And without a doubt, the thickest entry on this list at number four is obviously Atelier Riza. I'll be honest, 90% of the reason I was excited for this show was Riza's thighs. The other 10% was the alchemy and adventure aspects. I mean, seriously, what are they feeding this girl on a farm to get her like this? After the first episode, though, I can say it's more like a 50-50 split between thighs and plot now. You know, I really love this trend of hour-long anime premieres we've had lately. This wasn't a show I expected that from, but it worked really well. It did a solid job of introducing us to the world of the game, the characters, and how interesting the field of alchemy can be. From what I've been told about the games, the story isn't the best, but the characters are top tier, and I can really see that in the episode we've had. The art is amazing as well, which is a big plus. I'm pretty optimistic about this one, and I hope it'll end up being one of the better video game adaptations. Winding down the list at number three is a show that totally caught me off guard, Undead Girl Murder Farce. I had no idea what type of show this was coming into it, and frankly, I still don't have any type of idea what this show is. But it is without a doubt one of the coolest story setups I've seen in some time. A half-demon, half-human guy is approached by a maid carrying a talking head. Yes, a literal talking head. She wants him to come to Europe with her to find her body and the man that took it from her, who also has a connection to the main character's past. And this all takes place within a fictionalized Meiji era Japan. Heavy shades of Revenger and Fena in this one, as well as a bit of Monogatari in the character dialogue and interactions. I also believe the director is Omata Shinichi, who did Kaguya-sama, so there's a lot of artistic firepower in this one as well. The cinematography looks amazing, the characters' conversation and banter flow so well, sounds so natural. There's just such a unique feeling to this one, and I really hope they can consistently keep this going, as this has the potential to be a sleeper of the season. Entering the top two at number two, there's My Happy Marriage. Those that know me well know Fruits Basket is my top one all time, and I'm a huge romance guy. Since Fruits Basket ended, there's been a huge hole in my heart, and this might just be the one to fill it. The first episode of My Happy Marriage absolutely blew me away with the artistic direction, to the beautiful backgrounds, designs, the voice acting, the pacing. It was just all phenomenal. Netflix really might be cooking something special here for once. The best way I can describe the story is like a slightly less magical Meiji era Cinderella. Mio, the main character's father, remarries a woman who hates her after the death of her mother. They have another daughter and Mio basically becomes a servant in her own home, is abused and put through all types of horrible treatment. Eventually her dad has her marry into another family and that's really where the story gets going with the appropriately named Happy Marriage. What I really like about this series is how Mio handles the pain of her past and continuously pushes forward. It's handled in such a realistic manner and I think everyone could learn a thing or two from this. She's such a kind hearted individual and deserves nothing but the best. If the production values here stay as good as they were in the first episode, I really think we got us one here. And last but certainly not least, at number one is Nanatsuma or the Reign of the Seven Spellblades. Now over the course of the past few months, you've probably heard Mashley described as quote unquote anime Harry Potter and that could not be further from the truth. This, my friends, is the real anime Harry Potter. Down to the character archetypes of the main cast, the school, the wands, it's clearly heavily influenced by J.K. Rowling's work. However, having read every volume and having this in my top five light novels, I can tell you it's so much more than that. Spellblaze is a genuinely great dark fantasy revenge story with amazing character development, some of the best world building I've ever seen, one of the most detailed magic systems ever, and tons of action. If done right, this should be an anime of the year discussions without a doubt. The issue is there's a big emphasis on if with JC staff. It could be Damachi season four or it could be Index season three with them. So I'm cautiously optimistic about this turning out well. They've announced they're doing the first three volumes, which I was hoping for as it provides the perfect stopping point for a first season. Pacing has always been an issue for JC staff and Spellblaze is a very verbiose and detailed read at times, so hopefully they can make things flow well for anime onlys while not omitting key details or events. Suffice to say, I'm very excited for Spellblaze. The first episode came out on Friday and it just absolutely blew me away. The art was great, the pacing was great. So it looks like JC staff are on the right track. Let's hope they stay on it. Now, like I said, these are just my top 10 most anticipated shows of summer 2023, but there are of course a ton of great shows airing this season. I don't think it's quite as deep as spring, but I will be watching everything as usual and doing write-ups on the seasonal. So feel free to check those out on my Twitter or my anime list linked in the description. But I also want to hear what y'all are most excited for this season. Let me know in the comments below. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe and turn notifications on so you don't miss when I upload new anime videos, which I try to do weekly, but don't always succeed. And thanks for watching, everyone. Stay safe, and I'll see y'all on the next video.